Hi everyone, my name is Rafael Queiroz. I'm a mechatronics master's student. And today I would like to show you how to merge Scopus and Web of Science database. Well, in my case, it helped me a lot merging these two databases because I could cover a wider range of works and well, it might help you too. So stick with me and let's do it. Before moving on, the first thing you need to do is to download the R language, which can be done in this website. I'm going to let the link in the description. It works for any operational system. You just gotta specify the one you use and click download here. And also the R Studio IDE. I'm also going to let the link in the description. Just go to the website and choose your operational system and download. And then you can go ahead. So here we are in our first database, Scopus. Yeah, the first thing you need to do is to make sure that you have the proper access uh, from your university. Then once you know that, you can start searching. So here is my search string. My work is related to sensor fusion and non-destructive testing. I'm just going to copy and paste it here. I'm also going to add a data range from 2018 up to 2022 and I'm going to search. My search returned 353 documents and to export the, the results you just need to press here uh, to select all files and then export and uh, you gotta check this box to export in a big text format and I'm also going to add all information to generate my bib file with all information here. Then I'm going to click here in export. So it's downloading now a file named scopus.bib uh, and this is the first step. So now I'm going to show you how to do the same thing with the Web of Science database. Now doing the same search in Web of Science. Again, I'm going to copy here my search string. Again, I'm going to paste it here. And also I'm going to specify a data range. Select here custom. And here I need to specify the month and also the date. So I'm going to write here 2018 from the first month from my first date up to 2022, uh, December uh, 31. Search. And as you can see, it returned it to 174 results. It's pretty less than the results we got in Scopus. So to export these results, just gotta click here, export, big text, and you're going to select this box records from one to the number of results it returned and i generally uh, export the full record here uh, which outputs uh, the greatest number of metadata and then just click ex export and it saved the file save drex uh, .bib. And I'm going to rename this file to wos.bib just to make it clear from where it came from. And I'm going to put the two files, uh, Scopus and Web of Science uh, bib files in a single folder. Once you have downloaded the two bib files, you can use this code, which I'm going to put in the description to merge the two databases and generate an Excel file. So the first step here in the first line, if you don't have the bibliometrics package installed, just uh, uncomment this line and run this, this line. Then you gotta set the path or the directory. In my case, uh, the two big, big files, they are located in this path here. I'm going to just run. Then I'm going to activate the bibliometrics library. Okay, now I'm going to save in a variable named uh, capital S, the, the data frame obtained from this copos.bib file. And I'm going to use this method here named convert to data frame. I'm going to run. So as you can see, it saved 353 instances of 37 variables. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing with Web of Science. I'm going to run this line number five. And you can see here on the right, uh, it saved 274 instances. And I'm going to merge, well, here's where the magic happens. It's going to merge the two databases using this method, merge DB sources. And also I'm going to remove the duplicates by setting here to true. So I'm going to run this line. And as you can see here below, 217 duplicates were removed. And now to check the dimension of my database. Now I have 410 unprecedented instances. So it proves that this method is efficient and both bases, they work complementarily. The next step is to install, if you don't have installed, this open uh, XLSX uh, library. In my case, I have it installed, so I'm just going to run it to activate this library. And the last step is to save the database in an Excel file format. In my case, I'm saving to this file here, database.excel uh, file. And as you can see, some, uh, some messages may appear here and some truncations might happen, but this is actually not a problem. And if you want to manually correct it, you just can open your Excel file and uh, adjust whatever you want. So now that uh, we have created this Excel file, we are able to upload this file on um, Bibliometrics uh, in an interface called uh, Biblioshine. You can activate it here by typing uh, Biblioshine on the console. I'm going to open the parenthesis. And here's the Biblioshine interface from Bibliometrics. And now you can upload your data by clicking here, import or load file. And you can click here now, load Bibliometrics file. And as you can see, it accepts either uh, Excel or, R, or R format. Now I'm going to, to browse my file. Here is my file database.excel. I'm going to double click and click here start. Once you have uploaded the Excel file, uh, you, you can generate pretty nice graphs that can support your reveal, your systematic review. And I'm going to show you three examples. Here is the first one. I want to, to get the country scientific production to see which countries produce the greatest number of articles or papers related to the thing that I'm researching. Here's an example. I can see the information in a table. China is in top one here in this case. I can also check other informations like, uh, let, me, let me see here, the word cloud is something very nice to have in a, in a paper. So here you can see the most used terms. And lastly, I also want to show you uh, the co-citation network, uh, which shows which papers cite which other papers and it's pretty nice also to have in your work. So that's it. I recommend you exploring this interface, which is pretty nice and can generate very nice graphs. Why merging these two databases like this, the way we did, is pretty good. Because when you import a raw file uh, in Bibliometrics, it asks uh, from which database you got the, the bib file. And if you try somehow to merge, to manually merge, uh, just copy and paste one uh, above the other, then uh, some errors are going to appear. And this way uh, I've tested it and it doesn't work so great as merging and generating an Excel file. So I strongly suggest you to use this code to generate an Excel file to upload to Bibliometrics. And besides, you also have uh, the option to manually correct some fields in the case that they have some errors because it may happen. And well, that's it. Now I'm going also to show you another interesting way to merge the two databases in case you don't want to generate an Excel file, but a BIP file without uh, duplicates. It's an online way to do it. You don't need any software, just copy and paste the BIP files. Let's jump into it. 
Well, this is the website I use when I want to merge the two databases. If I want, for example, to upload to Mendeley so that I can read or download the, the articles, the papers, and that's pretty easy. You, you, just got, you just gotta copy and paste the bib files one above the other and click here on this tidy button. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to open here the two files. I'm using VS Code, the text editor. I'm going to select all files from this copos.bib. Just, I'm just going to copy. I'm going to clean it here and paste. Now I'm going to press enter just to jump a line. And I'm going to open this web of science dot bib. I'm going to copy again, select all, copy. And here I'm going to paste. Uh, and I'm going to go here in this field, duplicates, merge the duplicates entries. I'm going to also check using matching uh, a D OI. And I'm going to let here combine as the default way to merge the, the information. And I'm going to click here on tidy. So as you can see, after I click it tidy, tidy here, uh, we now have 424 instances. And you may ask, well, using the method from the R code, we got 410. Well, that's okay because they use different methods and you can manually add the ones they are missing. And I generally let as it is because I use the first way just to see graphical information and I use this way to uh, read the articles without duplicates. Now you can copy the generated file without duplicates and I'm going to create here uh, a new file named merged.bib and I'm going to paste and now you have all information uh, and you can upload to Mendeley and do your research, download your papers and uh, be happy. Well, that's it. If you enjoyed the video, please spread to the research community so that other people can know how to merge uh, Scopus and Web of Science databases and do their researches. That's it. Thank you. Bye.